So anybody else as pissed as me that right when they're introducing the Fantastic Four, Captain America, the OG Human Torch, left the MCU, we're not going to get to see Chris Evans and another Human Torch in the same room. I blame the Rona. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. Today what I'm going to be discussing is the first family of the Marvel Universe, the Fantastic Four, and how Marvel plans to introduce them into the MCU. So I need you guys to leave your thoughts down below if you think the way Marvel is going to introduce the Fantastic Four makes sense, or do you think there's a better way to do it? And also don't forget to leave a like because I thought this was a perfect opportunity to do a giveaway of something I've been trying to get rid of. If you're a Funko Pop collector, you probably already know what this is. But if you don't, it's Marvel subscription box for Funko Pop. So if you're subscribed, leave a like and comment down below. You have a chance to win the same t-shirt I'm wearing and two Fantastic Four Funko Pops. All right, so diving into the reports that we're getting about how Marvel is planning to use the Fantastic Four and introducing their version to new audiences through the MCU. This is all in connection to how we recently found out that Ant-Man 3 is in development. They even have a new writer, Jeff Loveness. You can check out a video I already did covering that news report. So with that information being thrown out there, Geeks Worldwide, who has been a very reliable source when it comes to superhero news you guys know i've used them a lot and they've correctly gotten scoops on a lot of things that have come to fruition like naming the villains in the batman other movies and details that were in production that got let known because of them they are now reporting what the first draft of the ant-man 3 script looked like written by paul rudd himself scott lang in the ant-man movies and why marvel decided to hire another writer who worked for rick and morty to kind of spice things up so in this ant-man 3 script that was was written by Paul Rudd which is not all that weird because Paul Rudd has actually had a hand in writing the script for the Ant-Man movies ever since the first one. He's gotten a writing credit on them so I guess for the third film he wanted to take on full responsibility. His original script included MODOK as the villain for Ant-Man 3. Even if you're not too familiar with the guy just looking at him he's probably someone you've seen flipping around the Marvel pages. The big head with the floating chair. But just to give you a quick summary of the villain he's an employee for AIM an organization that we've already seen in the Marvel Universe with a genius level of intellect who underwent an experiment that caused him to have a freakishly large head. So large, he needed a floating chair to be mobile. If you remember watching Ant-Man and the Wasp, there's a mysterious villain that doesn't get named, but is the person who is hiring Ghost and these other people to go after Ant-Man and the Wasp for a certain item. In Ant-Man 3, it was going to be revealed that MODOK was this villain. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's like, Chris, I clicked on here for Fantastic Four. You haven't even mentioned them yet. Well, when you scroll down further into the details of this article and what the movie was aiming to look like based off Marvel's suggestion, they have it written here, originally Marvel wanted to put the Fantastic Four in Ant-Man 3, but now they have pivoted away from that and want to feature some incarnation of the young Avengers in the film. This right here gives us real insight to how Marvel is planning to introduce the Fantastic Four into the MCU by first introducing them in a single hero movie, kind of warming them up to the public before they give them their full fledged solo or team movie of the Fantastic Four. This should actually be no surprise that this is how they plan to introduce a new group of heroes into their universe because it's the way they've done it for a long time now. I mean we got introduced to Spider-Man and Black Panther in the MCU through the movie Captain America Civil War where then from there they branched off into their own solo movies Spider-Man Homecoming and Black Panther. I know us geeks who follow the movie news non-stop are very up to date to what's going on and how Marvel plans to do things in their movies. But to the general movie going audience who still remember Jessica Alba as Invisible Woman or Miles Teller as Stretchy McStretchy will be a little confused if this Fantastic Four is its own thing or part of the MCU. The only sad part about this is that it lets us know that Fantastic Four will not be included in Ant-Man 3, but you can bet they will be showing up in a later Marvel movie. I think it's kind of the smart decision not to introduce them into Ant-Man 3, especially since the Fantastic Four I think is a big deal and is something a lot of fans have been waiting to see done by Marvel themselves and I think would be kind of an odd pairing to have the Fantastic Four alongside Ant-Man. It makes a lot more sense that they're gonna go with the Young Avengers for Ant-Man 3. If you don't know the Young Avengers are basically like the Teen Titans for the Marvel Universe. Some of the characters that they want implemented into the Young Avengers that we have right now in this universe are Casey Lang which is Ant-Man's daughter, Kate Bishop which is gonna get her own Disney Plus series along with Hawkeye, and apparently the children of Scarlet Witch and Vision. That makes the most sense because you already have that connection of Ant-Man and his daughter and what it means to be like I know what it's like to be a hero honey 
I don't want you to be a hero. So the only question we have left is, if they're not going to be introduced in Ant-Man 3, then which solo Marvel movie will they be introduced in? Honestly, if I had to put money on it, I'm going to go with Black Panther 2. Just because Marvel Studios has shown that they like to be very faithful when it comes to adapting comics and paying respects to what showed up there, and one of the very first appearances of the Black Panther character was in a Fantastic Four comic book back in 1966. So I think it's only poetic and makes the most sense if you introduce the Fantastic Four into a Black Panther movie because I'm looking at the list of all the other upcoming Marvel films and none of them scream to me that's where the Fantastic Four will show up other than maybe Spider-Man 3. The second appearance of Spider-Man had him meet up with the Fantastic Four and in the comic books Spider-Man always idolized Johnny Storm and wanted to be a hero just like him and again it could be a vice versa situation. One thing's for sure though I want John Krasinski as my Mr. Fantastic. The boy got robbed from being Captain America so it only makes sense he gets this role. But I want to hear from you guys. How do you feel that this is the way Marvel is planning to introduce the Fantastic Four by sneaking them into another solo movie before giving them their own full solo movie? Also, who would be your dream cast to play these characters? Really interested to see what you guys have to say on that. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to be entered into the giveaway. But as always, my name is Chris. Take care.